Hi guys, this is Marvin from ShopsadaPage.com and today we are going to do an unboxing review of the Kingston UV500 SSD. I'm going to benchmark this using my new system here and then afterwards I'm going to use the SSD upgrade kit and replace the old hard drive on the system so that we can have an idea on the performance of this SSD on both systems. So let's get into it. We have here the Kingston UV500 SSD. The package is a little bit bigger because this is actually an SSD upgrade kit, which basically has everything you need to upgrade your current system. So let's check out what comes in the package. So inside the box, we have a 3.5 inch mounting plate and mounting screws here so that you'll be able to install the SSD inside the case with 3.5 inch base. We also have here a 2.5 inch USB 3.0 enclosure so that you'll be able to reuse your old hard disk as an external storage once you've upgraded your system. The package also includes a power and data cables which is very convenient. And then we have here the Acronis True Image HD key so that you can easily clone your current system on the Kingston UV500. We also have here a 7mm to 9.5mm adapter for maximum compatibility across different devices and enclosures. And finally, we have the Kingston UV500 SSD itself. The construction is made of metal and super lightweight and a little bit darker compared to other models. At the back, we have some technical details about the product like the capacity and serial number. Back in front, it has a nice texture with an embossed Kingston logo right here and that's pretty much it. Comparing this with the 2.5 inch HDD here, it's basically identical in size with the Kingston UV500 being a little bit thinner at 7mm. Now, let's take a closer look at the included USB 3.0 enclosure. The design and construction are quite basic, it's made of hard plastic material with Kingston logo in front. At the back, it has a sliding mechanism for the cover and inside it is the micro USB cable. Installing hard disk inside this is very straightforward. You just have to line up the connections inside the enclosure with the connections of the hard drive. Slide the hard disk inside, make sure it's secure, and then pop the cover back. Lock it and you're all set. The Kingston UV500 comes in various form factors like the traditional 2.5 inch drive, M.2 and M SATA. It also comes in various capacities depending on the form factor, ranging from 120GB up to a whopping 1TB. You can get this as a standalone drive or as an SSD upgrade kit like what we have here today. The Kingston UV500 also boasts data encryption using 256-bit AES hardware-based encryption, which is a very nice feature to protect your data on hardware level. Here are the specifications just in case you want to check it out. In addition to everything that I've mentioned, the Kingston UV500 can also be managed using the Kingston SSD Manager which you can download from their website. Inside the software, you can update the firmware, check health status, enable security features and other monitoring options for the SSD. Now, let's move on to the benchmark, shall we? For the first set of our benchmarks, I'm running this using my new Ryzen system with these specifications. So our 480GB variant here is rated at 520MB per second sequential reads and 500MB per second sequential writes. And looking at our crystal disk benchmark, we were able to easily hit and even exceed that at 543.7MB per second read and 531.2MB per second write, which is always a nice thing to see. I've also tested it on AS SSD benchmark, which is another benchmarking tool that tests an SSD without using the system cache. The Kingston UV500 was still able to run at decent sequential read and write speeds here as well as 4K random operations and the total time to access the entire drive in one full stroke. To test the real world performance of this SSD, I used a tool called DiskBench which pretty much simulate a real world file transfer and accurately record the number of files copied, the total size, the time to finish the transfer, and the transfer rate throughout the process. I also tested this using PC Mark 8 storage benchmark to test the real-world performance of this SSD on various applications and games. And lastly, I ran this through Anvil Storage Utilities for good measure and of course, the popular ATTO Disk Benchmark tool which measures the performance of the drive in various file transfer sizes so you can have an idea how it performed across the board with a graph that is easy to understand. Alright guys, so right now we're going to replace the old hard drive on the system with the Kingston UB500 using the upgrade kit that is included in the package. So for the first thing we have to do is to attach the SSD on the 3.5 inch bracket right here. I only use two screws for mounting any hard disk or SSD because I feel like it's enough 
and then if you want to upgrade or remove it uh, afterwards you can easily remove it so right now i've already installed the sst on the bracket as you can see here now i'm going to remove the old hard drive here first is to remove the sata and power connector of course So right here, I have the old mechanical hard drive from the system, but just in case you're going to use the SSD upgrade kit on a laptop, you can um, use this external hard disk enclosure that I showed you on the unboxing to install the 2.5 inch hard drive inside it and use this an external storage, for example. So now we're going to install the SSD with the included bracket inside the casing. And it's actually pretty straightforward, you just have to slide it inside. Like so and then attach it using the included screws as I mentioned earlier. You can use two or one, it's fine, as long as it's fairly secured inside it. And lastly, of course, we just need to plug in the, the power and data cables. And we're all set. So now I'm going to power this up and install a fresh Windows 10 and then perform quick benchmarks so that we can have an idea how the Kingston UB500 performs inside an old system like this. Alright guys, so before we proceed with the benchmarks on this old system, let's see the difference when it comes to boot times. So for the old mechanical hard drive, the boot time is around 1 minute and 43 seconds, which is painfully slow. This makes upgrading to an SSD like the Kingston UB500 really does make sense even on an old system like this. So with the Kingston UB500, the system was able to boot for only around 23 seconds, which is significantly faster. Now, these are the specifications of this old system and unfortunately, it's only capable of supporting SATA 2 speeds at 3GB per second as you can see here, so it will not be able to run the full capability of the Kingston UB500. But still, as we saw on the boot time and on these benchmarks, the difference in performance is night and day. Now, to be fair, the old 80GB hard drive only supports SATA 1 speeds, hence the relatively slow speeds on the benchmarks. But even on a new hard drive like my WD My Passport Ultra, as you can see the speeds here, is still far slower than the Kingston UB500 that runs at around 250 MB per second on this old system. So to conclude, basing on our testing here, regardless of the platform, upgrading to an SSD like the Kingston UB500 is still super worth it, especially that the prices of consumer SSDs are starting to drop down recently. Having a hardware-based encryption feature on the Kingston UB500 is also a nice bonus, and the fact that you can get this with an SSD upgrade kit is very nice especially for those consumers that just want to get the job done. There you have it guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to check the full article link on the description below. Thanks to Kingston for sending this in, you can get this from the links below as well. Subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Thank you, have a great day.